My wife and I bought this Airstream early last year in, in uh, May. We did a lot of work to it. We had about 250 hours in it. Uh, it had rotten floors, a lot of problems. And one problem it's had pretty much since day one is the 12 volt supply would just drop out. We would have no 12 volts. And I'd get the meters out and I'd rush in, they would come back. Uh, and lately it's been doing it more often. I was able to troubleshoot it. Found several different things. And I think we finally got it. So I thought I might share this with people that had a 12 volt problem in an Airstream. Because I bet I'm not the only one. So I'll give you a quick overview of what we're up against here. This used to be a couch chair. It's now a settee with just two very comfortable chairs and no table. It's, well, we have a small table here. And maybe when I get done I'll put everything back together and give you a quick tour for those that are interested. So on this particular model, the converter for the AC to DC is in, the, is in this little compartment which would be part of the couch. And the, uh, all the battery wires now come in here, the charger comes in here, and if you put a, a solar panel, it would also come in here. And that's a real problem. Solar panels need to be addressed in a particular way, and maybe we'll go over that. I uh, might even make a separate video because we've had real problems caused by the solar panel. So the DC batteries come in here, the AC which becomes DC, and up here is your 12 volt DC distribution panel. And right here is a ground panel. So we had two problems in here, and I'll show you where they were. The first was the, the, uh, there was an electrician before me and he put in a, a kill switch but he broke the 50 amp breaker, there's an automatic breaker on these uh, between the batteries and the DC control panel. And what he did was unknowingly, and it's easy to do, he broke the Bakelite on the 50 amp breaker. And when it, normally it would make, but if you just wiggled the wire, or if you, if you were somewhere and the, the trailer moved, that wire would open just enough the Bakelite would loop open enough to lose contact inside and you lose your 12 volts and then it would just come back if, if another bump. The second thing that happened, the ground wires in here that come from the battery, there was a problem in those. Each time I thought, oh I've got it, there, there it is, I fixed it. Well what it finally turned out to be was this particular model has a ground bar, they all have them, and I, the ones I've seen kind of look the same, that lost contact in between the legs of the ground bar. So intermittently, the, it would uh, lose contact, and then when I'd go to troubleshoot it, I would put the meter on, it was just enough of a jiggle, so everything would come back. Or I'd even, a couple of times I just walked in here, ran and got the meter, walked in here, and it was back. So it has been very frustrating. Finally, we got it to stay and we're able to troubleshoot it and we put, well, let me, let me zoom in more so that you can see what I'm talking. Alright, I'm going to just try to give you an idea of what I was talking about under the seat. Here is the charger slash converter, converts the uh, AC to 12 volts. In this system, uh, it isn't like some of the other campers I own. Nothing drops out or pulls in when you plug into 110 volts on this system. You don't have a relay that switches you over to the batteries. This simply charges the batteries whenever it's plugged in. So the battery charger just comes up here on this uh, bar, electrical bar, which is a 12 volt bar. The two batteries come in, they go through, go through an automatic breaker land on the bottom of this copper bar, one from each side, and then from, this is the 50 amp automatic breaker here. It comes out and goes up to that panel, the distribution panel for the 12 volts. So the interesting thing is, this system, you do not take the charger out of the system when you unplug the 110 volts, and it does pull current. It isn't much, but it's enough to eventually run the batteries dead. And that's why 
the kill switch is installed in these. This is the 12 volt DC distribution panel. As you can see, each circuit has an automatic circuit breaker on it. Not all these circuits are being used, but each one that goes out to the lights, the refrigerator, the water heater, anywhere where 12 volts is used has an automatic circuit breaker and comes to this point right here. So as you can see, my batteries are a little low because I have not charged them since we started. I would love to have taken a video while we were troubleshooting and show you what we found, but it was so intermittent there was no way I was going to take time enough to stop and go get the videography equipment and take care of this. So we'll just go over what happened. So first, as I mentioned, we had an initial ground problem that these big black wires, one comes on each side, those are from the battery. That's the, the ground side or the minus side of the battery coming into this block. This down here is your ground distribution block. Every ground in the camper comes back to this point one way or another so that there's no ground loops. The actual chassis ground comes from here. It's right under this this tab here. Um, now one of the things you want to remember if you're in here is there's tremendous power here. You've got two block batteries, it's probably six to nine hundred uh, amp hours each. The batteries as soon as you can if you're going to work in here. That's my disclaimer. So our problem as it turned out was when I would, after I'd fix the grounds, I would come in and I'd just throw this meter onto this top lug, which is natural, and I would read 12 volts, or at this point, 10.78 volts. But when I finally got it to be here, I would then go to the next step, and this would be zero volts, because the ground was not attached from this first block to the second block. There's only a rivet into some kind of back plate which you cannot get to that carried the current between these and the same if you went to the third one and I have to admit I found a little bit by accident I went to hook this up and I grounded between them and I got arcing so immediately I knew there was a problem between these and it was there and I hooked on here and I had zero volts on my meter which meant I had no connection from this ground lug to this ground lug and no connection from this one to this one to this one. So intermittently, th whatever was causing it, I would lose the ground between these and I'd lose my 12 volts because the, the positive 12 volt lead couldn't get current back to the negative of the battery, which is right here. These two here are the negative to the battery. So if they can't connect to these other lugs, which then carries all the grounds for the unit, um, then you're not going to have any 12 volts in the system and it's a very intermittent problem. There's a copper plate and these are quarter 28 capped head Allen screws because they'll fit. I, I drilled the plate exactly a half an inch between each one and I put these in to hold it and then these are just quarter uh, 28 uh, volts and I drilled and tapped this copper, put ends on all of the grounds and bolted it in. Uh, these are not quarter 28, but they, I mean, they're not, they're 5 16 fine thread. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. These are 5 16 fine thread on half inch on center. And these are basically the same thing, only quarter inch fine thread. So there you go. That was the answer. And it works if you're having it's been my experience in trailers. I've done a lot of work in trailers. When you're having really weird 12 volt problems, it usually is the ground. If you've got light uh, problems on your trailer and you step on the brake and the, the tail lights come on, you put on the turn signal and you know some of the parking lights work, you probably have a bad ground. All right, I'm gonna put a little of the camper on this just to see if if in case you want to see it, otherwise uh, this is done. Thank you. This is our 2000 26 foot Excella. Of course it's Airstream. We're just going to do a quick walk through.
When we bought this, the former owner had done a lot of work on it. He started at the top and worked his way down. He replaced the air conditioner. He replaced the stove. Replaced the toilet. The, air, the water pump. And the uh, hot water heater. And then, and he'd, he'd gone ahead and redid the walls with uh, mouse fur. But when he got to the floors, he got a little discouraged because the floors were rotten. This thing leaked terribly and the back floor was rotten. I've got a lot of still pictures of it, but I did not take any videos. I was just, uh, I just got to work on it. We ripped out this whole back end, ripped out all the floors. The doors under the beds were leaking. This is a twin bed system. And caused the whole floor in the back to rot out. We actually sealed those doors closed. We don't use them. We had another camper with twin beds had the same problem. Sealed the doors closed. My wife made the quilts and all the curtains. We removed all the mouse fur and put this boat vinyl in. It's got a quarter inch of uh, foam behind it so it captures a little heat. So we redid all the walls from the bottom of the covers down. The unit came with that type of vinyl on the top. On it. So we didn't have to do the ceiling, which was really great. So she made the, these... Uh, I, I asked her for a eagle quilt for mine because we've named this the Silver Eagle. It's legally registered as such. So she made me a nice quilt with matching pillows. And she made the new curtains all through the whole thing. Going back the other way, we replaced all the floor, rebuilt the floor underneath, and then skimmed it with a half inch underlayment and then put tile down. Redid the bathroom, turn on a light, put a new backsplash on. Uh, the previous owner had put a new toilet in, so we just did, redid the floor. And actually the bathroom was quite nice. We did put a new refrigerator in because we had to tear it out to get all the old carpet out of everywhere because it was all moldy. We had to go underneath all the sinks, underneath the sink and all the cabinets and get all the old carpet out because it was moldy. So then we had to rebuild the whole floor, which we did. And we can put a little, whatever you want to call it, curtain there. It's not a curtain, but anyway. So we put just uh, some really nice, comfortable chairs. They weren't a lot of money. They were online. And uh, new curtains in here. New boat shrunk walls. She made cushions for the settee. We hung a smart TV that I'm not smart enough to use but that's a real quick picture of the inside of our camper